Aloha guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. I thought tonight we would do an itinerary like plan for Magic Kingdom. Actually, it is inspired by you guys. I get a lot of comments on my videos of people asking for an itinerary. You guys want a step-by-step, ride-by-ride, kind of what you should do each park day so that when you go to the parks, you know exactly what you should do next and, and so on. I totally get what you guys are asking. However, itineraries are hard to build and have them be generic, right? To have them be kind of a perfect fit for all people because everyone just comes from a different place. We're different ages. We have different aged kids with us. We have different interests. Are you you know, really interested in the characters? Are you really interested in coasters, kitty rides? Are you interested in the classic iconic rides? Is it really important that you see the parades or the fireworks? All those kind of things kind of come into play when building an itinerary. Plus, it is kind of my personal opinion, I have mentioned it before, that I don't really like itineraries. I don't really like step-by-step, ride-by-ride, guides that you should follow when at the parks because it just never works out. So many variables at play, including Genie Plus, wait times, um, your kids. Sometimes you think they want something and nope, nope, they change their mind. They want something else. Sometimes they want to ride a ride over and over again. You got to think about bathroom breaks, snack breaks, lunch times. All those kind of things can come into play that can change your so-called step-by-step itinerary. So I thought rather than doing that, I would share with you guys kind of my family's game plan or how we typically will do Magic Kingdom. And if you guys like this video, then I can continue and do it for all four parks. So like I said, this isn't necessarily a step-by-step -step itinerary, but if you're looking for something to guide you or something for you to kind of follow and morph and tweak into what works for you, this is what my family typically does at Magic Kingdom. And I wanna start out by saying that if you are a family with young kids, some of these things you might want not wanna do. In fact, if you have little kiddos, you might wanna bypass some of this stuff and just head directly to Fantasyland and hit up Peter Pan and Small World and Winnie the Pooh and meet the princesses and you know hang out with Mickey and do all those kind of things first. I'm kind of doing those things in the middle of the day. For those of you who have older kids or you're young adults, you might be more interested in coasters, in which case you might be running to those coasters or those mountain rides more than what I have in my daily kind of game plan. So just note that this isn't necessarily something for you to follow exactly, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how not only my family does Magic Kingdom, but how you could too and you know make it work for you is basically what I'm saying. So let's get into it. Of course, the first thing is Genie Plus and staying at a Disney resort. So my little game plan here will include Genie Plus and the fact that we are staying on property. If you aren't staying on property, then obviously you would adjust this slightly. So of course, 7 a.m. first thing in the morning, I'm gonna get my Genie Plus. My family's goal is Jungle Cruise. That's right, that will be the first thing I will Genie Plus that morning. And the only other thing to uh, get uh, that morning at 7 a.m. is Seven Dwarf Mine Train. However, in my game plan, we are not gonna do an individual lightning lane for Seven Dwarf Mine Train because we are gonna arrive to the park a half an hour early before anyone else, and we are gonna run or walk at a fast pace, no running, to Seven Dwarf Mine Train and ride it first. That's right, that is our game plan. We are gonna get up first thing in the morning. We are gonna go to Seven Dwarf Mine Train, beat all the rest of the people and ride that first. Then we are gonna backtrack a little bit and head into Adventureland where I will have my first Genie Plus of the morning, right, which is Jungle Cruise. Now, depending on what time you got that Genie Plus for, you might be riding that right away, which is great, 
or there are a few rides in that area, a few attractions that you can kind of mix and match and change which one you do, you know, before and after so that you can kind of not base, so you're not just like standing around like, okay, Jungle Cruise, is it time yet? You want to kind of fill those voids of waiting for your Genie, Pla Genie Plus time with something. So in that area, at no particular order, we could easily ride Pirates of the Caribbean, maybe a few times, depending on the, white, on the wait time. We might do Aladdin's Flying Carpet, great for kiddos, by the way, not necessarily something you have to do, but if you have 15 minutes to kill waiting for your Genie Plus, sure, hop on Aladdin's Flying Carpets, or you can go to the Tiki Room. Any of those variable things is what we will be doing first thing in the morning while waiting for the Jungle Cruise. So if Jungle Cruise is first, then as we move further into the park, we will do Pirates. If we're waiting for something, you know, we'll mix and match basically those three attractions with Jungle Cruise. So then once we're on Jungle Cruise, right, I'm in line, I've already scanned in twice. I'm gonna Genie Plus the next ride. This is when we usually will have a family discussion. Hey, what are you interested in today? What should we do next? We will do anywhere between Haunted Mansion, Splash Mountain, or Big Thunder. Again, this really depends on what time the passes are and what time, you know, the wait times are. Usually, we will pass Splash Mountain. But if Splash Mountain has a lower wait, maybe because of the weather and not everyone wants to get soaking wet, we will pass Haunted Mansion instead also depends on the time of day because you know lunch could be happening soon. So this is all things that we discuss in line for Jungle Cruise. But let's just say we are gonna uh, Genie Plus Splash Mountain. So while we're on Jungle Cruise, we scanned in two times, we are gonna go ahead and get a pass for Splash Mountain. Then when we're done with Jungle Cruise, depending on the time and if we've ridden Pirates yet or not, we'll go ride Pirates. Then we will go get in line for Big Thunder while waiting for our Splash Mountain Pass to happen. Somewhere, depending on what time it is, we will also mix in lunch, because by this time, it could be lunchtime. For us, lunchtime is in the 11, 11.30 zone. We are early eaters, and that's when we will go up and eat at Pecos Bill, which is over there in Frontierland, really, really close to Splash Mountain. So. You with me so far? It's about lunchtime. We have already done Jungle Cruise, Pirates. We have uh, Seven Dwarf Mine Train, right? We did that first. We may have done Tiki and Aladdin based on everything going on. Then we may have ridden uh, Big Thunder and Splash and done lunch. Now, while we're on Splash Mountain, after we've clicked in those two times, right, we will get another Genie Plus Pass, which we usually will get for Haunted Mansion which is my daughter's favorite attraction. So while we're waiting for Haunted Mansion to happen, we're riding Splash, we'll get lunch, all those good things. Usually by then a cavalcade will come by. So we'll wait in line, watch a cavalcade, wave at Mickey and keep moving on. Then we will hit Haunted Mansion. Woo while we're on Haunted Mansion and we've clicked in our two times, we will get another pass and that is usually for something in Fantasyland, because as soon as you hit Haunted Mansion, if you go to the right, you are in Fantasyland. At this point, this is when we have to decide if we're going to do Winnie the Pooh, Small World, Peter Pan. Again, it's based on the Genie Plus times in the moment. Peter Pan is something that is crazy. It's a super simple, super short ride whose Genie Plus Pass is always out pretty quickly. But if you wait in line for it, you could be waiting almost an hour, which is kind of obnoxious for a ride that's only 45 seconds. So usually if we can score a, a Peter Pan, we will get Peter Pan. Otherwise, we might skip it because our next, you know, Magic Kingdom day, we might do Peter Pan first instead of Seven Dwarf Mine Train, but that's just something to kind of note. So anywhere between a Small World, Peter Pan, or Winnie the Pooh, we will usually pass one of those and then we will ride the other ones and just wait standby. So then, you know, a little bit after lunch has happened, we may have done Peter Pan, we've done Small World, we go all the way over to Winnie the Pooh and also have ridden that. At that point, we may or may hit up teacups. It depends on how we're feeling in the moment. But 
while we were genie plusing whatever ride it was that we got a genie plus for, whether it was Peter Pan, Small World, or Winnie the Pooh, when you click in for your second time, you can get another genie plus, genie plus pass. So at this point, we will have mentally moved on to another area of the park and we will have passed either Little Mermaid, uh, Dumbo, or Barnstormer, depending on, again, the times at play and the wait times, but this is us mentally thinking ahead. Are you guys with me? So we started with Seven Dwarf Mine Train, then we went into Adventureland. Then from Adventureland, we walked into Frontierland. After Frontierland, we move into Fantasyland. When we're done with Fantasyland, we're moving into what's known as Fantasyland 2, which is the newer area of Fantasyland. So every time I Genie Plus the next ride, I'm mentally thinking where we are headed next in flow of the park map. So after we have done Small World, possibly Peter Pan and Winnie the Pooh, we will be headed to the next part of Fantasyland, which is the Little Mermaid, right? Under the Sea with Little Mermaid, and then eventually we will get to Storybook Circus, where you will hit Dumbo and the Barnstormer. So we will pass one of those three while also waiting standby for the others. You kind of got me here? If you're looking at a park map, it might be a little bit easier for you to understand. So we've went from uh, Fantasyland to New Fantasyland, right? We're gonna do Little Mermaid, Barnstormer, and Dumbo. We will have Genie, pa Genie Plus one of those. While we were in the ride for whatever one we got to Genie Plus and we've scanned in our two times, we will then get a pass for Space Rangers with Buzz Lightyear. Because again, that's where we're flowing next in line for the park. So after we have done Dumbo and Barnstormer, we will continue to walk down the flow of the map. And this is where we will hit Tomorrowland Speedway. Now Tomorrowland Speedway, and depending on the time of year, we will either ride or we will skip. We do, in fact, love this ride, but a big chunk of it is in the sun, right? Under the sun, under the heat with no shade. So this could easily be a ride where we're like, you know what, let's do it later, or let's go ahead and ride it. If we happen to manage to Genie Plus that ride, even better because we don't wanna wait in the sun. It is also about this time that we will usually get a Mickey pretzel or some popcorn over by Dumbo. So yeah, and of course use the restroom at some point. Gotta fit in those bathroom breaks, guys. So then after we're over here de debating between uh, Tomorrowland Speedway, yes or no, we will usually walk over to People Mover. We love the People Mover. Usually has 15 to 25 minute wait, so we will go ahead and do the people mover, love it there. And then of course, kitty corner to the people mover is the carousel progress, which we will also do. Carousel progress never really has a wait because it's a continually happening show. You will know what I'm talking about once you ride it. Meanwhile, we are waiting for our Genie Plus Pass for Buzz Lightyear. What is right next to the people mover and carousel of progress? You get guessed it, it is Buzz Lightyear. So again, my family, rather than bopping all over the place, we follow the path of the map. So at this point, we have kind of hit all the rides that we love following the park map into Buzz Lightyear, which is usually kind of the end of the line rides for us. It is at this point that you might want to do Space Mountain. Space Mountain is in the same area as People Mover, Carousel of Progress, and Buzz Lightyear. So maybe you genie plus that one. Maybe you want to wait. Stand by. Again, all up to you. I'm just telling you what we usually do. So then by the time we've clicked into uh, Buzz Lightyear, depending on what time it is, and if there are any passes left, genie plus passes is what I'm talking about, we might pass something else, and that's when we might become more human ping pong ball. We might do Jungle Cruise again. We might finally get to do Peter Pan, or maybe the husband will do Space Mountain. I mean, it really just depends what passes are left. But usually about that time when we've hit Buzz Lightyear, we're ready for a break. So usually we will go back to our hotel for pool time, or we might park hop, 
Or we might sit on the curb, watch a parade, just kind of chill, get a cold drink, something like that. But usually that's kind of when we're done for the day. We don't usually build in time to see parades. That is not something we have to do all the time every trip. It's usually something that if the parade happens to go by when we're in the area, yeah, we'll stop and we'll watch it. But I don't usually build it into our particular itinerary. If the Festival of Fantasy Parade is important to you, then yeah, you're going to want to build that into your game plan. Also know that you can Genie Plus the parade but I don't know if I suggest it. I think I would rather save my Genie Pluses for rides than to use my Genie Pluses on the parades or meeting characters. I think if you have little kids, then yes, you might wanna spend your Genie Pluses on parades and characters because that might be your focal point for your trip. For ours, that is not really a key ingredient, right, for us to have the best trip ever for my family. So we kind of let parades and things happen. Same thing with fireworks. If we're in the area when fireworks go off or it's almost time for fireworks, then yeah, we'll wait around an hour to see the fireworks. But we're not really usually like, oh gosh, you know, fireworks, quickly, let's get to the park, fireworks. That's not really us. I think it's because we've seen them so many times. But if fireworks are important to you, then yeah, you need to know that you do have to wait a good hour or so for those fireworks. But usually a little bit after Buzz Lightyear, maybe we've genie plused something else. Uh, we usually hit about dinner time at this point. So we may have a dining reservation, which is great. Magic Kingdom has some awesome dining locations. We love Crystal Palace. Uh, Liberty Tree Tavern has a really good like Thanksgiving-like meal over there. The plaza is pretty good. Maybe you're a princess person and you're eating at Cinderella's Royal Table. Really depends on you guys, but that's usually when we, you, you know, it's about dinner time, for which case if we have dining reservations, great. Otherwise, because where we ended up, we will usually eat at Casey's Corner, right? Get a, a vegan dog over there or a hot dog over at Casey's Corner. And that's usually when we will discuss what to do with the rest of our day. Should we wait for the fireworks? Should we just go back to the hotel? Should we hop? What should we do? But that is, in a nutshell, our kind of step-by-step -step itinerary for Magic Kingdom. Hopefully this made sense to you guys, but basically if you get out a park map, you know, maybe I'll post one, you know, put, put up a park map. We start with a key ride, a hit ride, Seven Dwarf Mine Train, just get her done. Then you have to pick an area of the park that you're gonna start at. For us, it's always Adventureland because it's our favorite. We absolutely love Jungle Cruise and Pirates of the Caribbean. In fact, if we ride Jungle Cruise twice in one day, we're pretty happy campers. Same with Pirates. We will literally, if there's enough time, we will go back to Adventureland and hit it up again. That's just how much we love it. So we usually will go from Seven Dwarfs to Adventureland, ride whatever we can in there, Genie Plus, whatever we can in there, and then just keep following the park map until we hit Frontierland, do what we can do in there, have lunch, and then just keep going till we're in Fantasyland, until we are then finally in Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland being where People Mover and Carousel of Progress and Buzz Lightyear are. By the time you've exited Tomorrowland, you are back on Main Street USA, which is where you started, right? When you enter the theme park, Magic Kingdom, you can walk straight down the street. That is Main Street, USA. If you walk straight down, dead center is the castle. The castle is basically the center of the hub, right? If you think of like a an old uh, wheel on a cart with the spokes, right? The castle's the dead center and the spokes are the different lands. So then we just backtrack a little bit and basically do a giant circle around the castle. So we start with Adventureland and go all the way around until we're at Tomorrowland again, which brings us back to that beginning spot right in front of the castle. Again, if you have little kiddos, you might wanna start in Fantasyland. If you are all about the coasters, maybe you wanna start in um, you know, Frontierland and get Splash Mountain and Big Thunder, or maybe Tomorrowland and do Space Mountain. Again, customize it 
to your needs, but that's what we do. It's really key to us anyway that we are not what I call human ping pong balls. So we're not just staring at the app, following all the genie pluses and, and going crazy all over the park. We do follow kind of a mindset, a path of the park map. And yeah, some days we skip Peter Pan and sometimes we get Peter Pan and sometimes we'll do something twice and sometimes we're lucky to do it at all. It just really depends on so many variables, right? Crowds, wait times, Genie Plus is a who knows what. But yes, this is, this is what we do, guys. So hopefully this made sense and hopefully it helps you out as you're kind of custom building either your itinerary or what I like to call your mental game plan, your top five things that you wanna try to accomplish and everything else is kind of icing on the cake. So when I say we might do tea, key, we might do teacups or we might do Tomorrowland Speedway, those are things that are more like icing on the cake. They were not things, those were not our game plan. Our game plan were the, the things that we were purposely trying to do and everything else is icing on the cake. So yeah, guys, hopefully this helped you out. Let me know if this was helpful, in which case I should do it for all four parks because I definitely know how my family does Disney World. So yeah, as always, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications like this video. And like I said, was this helpful? Let me know. If you're like Nina, no, don't need it. Let me know as well. I am just trying to make videos that you guys find helpful and that you enjoy. So those comments are really very helpful to me. So keep them coming. But as always, guys, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye.